What's up, you guys? It's Mrs. Talati here, representing Mrs. Cervati. Uh, it's just me today talking to myself in my room. You know how I feel about that. Mrs. Cervantes is at a meeting, so I will be covering 14.2 sets of real numbers with you guys. Your essential understanding for today is I can describe relationships between real numbers. I am going to have you guys add in. This might be the ticket for you to get the credit. Um, is really the definition of what real numbers are. So I'm going to have you add it right over here. And I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit more. That's a terrible end. Let me write it. Real numbers, the definition, or is it a real numbers um, consist? It's like I haven't written today. Of the set of rational. I'm going to break that down for you a little bit more. Um, and the set of irrational. My class, we talked about it a little bit today, um, very quickly. So then this is where I want to spend some time. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these into the two categories that they are, um, give you the types of numbers you're going to see in each category, and then you'll really be able to decide how they differ. Okay? So this is where I'm talking about rational numbers. Okay? So rational numbers, and again, is any number you can write as a fraction. Basically, that's like the kid-friendly version. Um, they reference it as A over B, where B doesn't equal zero. But if you think about it, you have whole numbers, right? So in the whole numbers category, that's rational, we have something like three. Well, if I take the number three to write it as a fraction, I would write it as three over one. Right? So then that falls into the category as any number you can write as a fraction. Well, then I look into my integers category, and the same thing. I'm going to pull a number. Let's look at negative 2. Negative 2, again, I can write as negative 2 over 1. So again, another rational number that I can write in the form of a fraction. We obviously can write fractions as fractions, and they can be mixed numbers, um, improper or proper, doesn't matter. And then the last one is a decimal. But in the decimal category, I need you to make sure you understand that it's only terminating, so decimals that end, right, or repeating. And again, I'll show you the difference here in a second. Um, so if we look over here, we have like 27 fourths, which is an improper fraction. We could easily convert that into a decimal. Um, or down here, we can have a decimal, and we can write it as a fraction um, either way, OK? So again, rational numbers are whole numbers, integers, fractions, and decimals that terminate or repeat. So then, what does that leave us with when we talk about the irrational category? The biggest one that we want to bring to your attention because you guys have a lot of knowledge about it is pi. Pi is a decimal that never terminates or repeats with a given pattern, right? So pi, anytime pi is involved, whether it be in an expression, an equation, um, as a ratio, anytime pi is involved, it automatically takes it to the irrational category. And then the second subset, if you will, is all, oh, that means I forgot one, all non-perfect square roots. Okay, and I actually am gonna show you guys a little bit, I hope it doesn't take too much time, but basically that looks like, so watch what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Insert page after, okay? So let me give you guys a quick run through like I did with my class today. So my perfect squares are um, 1, 4, 9, 16. Let's just go to 25. You guys should know 1 through 15, but for right now, let's just start there. So again, the square root of 1 is 1. Let's put plus or minus. The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. The square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. The square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. And the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. These are all rational numbers, okay? Which means all of our non-perfect square roots, such as square root of 2, square root of 3, see how they would fit in here? Square root of 5, square root of 6, square root of 7, square root of 8. I'm not going to do these all, but then we go square root of 10, square root of 11, square root of 12, square root of 13, square root of 14, and square root of 15. These are all examples of non-perfect square roots. Therefore, they will fall into the irrational numbers subset or category, okay? Because these square roots will never terminate or repeat as decimals. And again, we'll get into more of that as we start to estimate them, but please make sure you understand perfect square roots 
are rational, and you guys should know the square root of 1 through the square root of 225, which is really 1 to 15, okay? And then irrational are all the ones in between. So then if you guys look at the subsets, you can see that once you fall um, into a smaller group, so for example, if I'm a whole number like 1, 1 is a whole number, an integer, and a rational number, and a real number. Right? So you build out of the subset into the categories. If you're an integer, you're an integer, a rational, and a real number. Okay? So hopefully that kind of makes sense how they're broken down into the two categories of rational and irrational, and then broken down in further into the subsets as far as integers and whole numbers go. So then let's, let's look at, this should be fairly easy. So if we look at the square root of 5, the square root, the square root of 5 is not a perfect square root. There is no number times itself that will give you a five. Therefore, it's an irrational number. But I want you to know that irrational numbers, if we go back to our diagram, are also real numbers. So you have to make sure that you include that for both. Now what I wanna do is just quickly, this is something that we need to review with you guys, is I'm gonna estimate my square root of five to the nearest 10. Square root of five falls between four and the square root of 9, okay? Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. 4 is only 1 away from 5, yet it's 4 away from 9. That means that it's closer to the 2 than it is the 3, which means I can narrow it down anywhere from 2.1 to 2.4. It's not 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, and it's not 2.5 because it's not in the middle, right? So you can see that 4 is very close to 5, so the decimal that's going to make the most sense without going over tremendously is going to be 2.1. So we would say the square root of 5 is approximately plus or minus 2.1. Okay, now if you said 2.2, because it can get a little closer, I believe that 2.2 might go over. Let's check it out. 2.244044. 4, 4, 4. Actually, this one's even better. So let's go and say that it's approximately 2.2 um, for the square root of 5. And again, on these, we're just asking you for the names, but I'm just kind of showing you again how you estimate those square roots. So then if you look at B, B is a decimal that terminates. So then it's going to fall under the rational which then falls under the real category, right? It's a rational number, the subset out of the real category. And then C, we can find the square root. I want you guys to notice that the square root symbol is only over the 81, therefore we're only taking the square root of 81, which is nine. We still have it over nine, so ultimately it gives us the one reduced number. And this one, one is considered a whole number, which remember, if it's in that smallest subset, it's also an integer. It's also a rational number, which means it's also a real number. So again, once it falls into that smaller category, it's everything beyond, okay? And then these next ones, we kind of gave you guys the answer to, but we wanted you to see how they kind of justify the rationale or their reasoning. So if you look at A, it says all irrational numbers are real. <laughs> well, if you look at your subset or your group, we titled this one real. Right? And then we broke it into the two, rational and irrational. So it says, true, every irrational number is included in the set of real numbers. The irrational numbers are a subset of the real numbers. Remember, the real numbers are broken into two subsets or two categories known as the rational and the irrational. B, it says, no rational numbers are whole numbers. Well, if you think about the subset group, again, you guys start seeing, I keep bringing this up, we have our um, rational numbers over here that then have the whole and the integer. So that one just kind of broke itself apart. So a whole number can be written as a fraction with a denominator of one. Again, if I take the whole number of three, it's really three over one. So every whole number is included in the set of rational numbers. The whole numbers are subsets of the rational, okay? So again, this was a false statement because all whole numbers, all, this one, if we changed it, would say all, okay? Then take a look, the number of people wearing glasses in a room. 
This has to be a set of whole numbers. If you think about it, we don't say, um, we don't count people as decimals and or fractions. We don't say, oh yeah, this class has 23.3 students in it, right? So the set of whole numbers best describes the situation. The number of people wearing glasses may be zero or any counting number, which means we also don't count people as negatives. It's either zero or one, it's not anything in between. Um, B, the circumference of a flying disc has a diameter of 8, 9, 10, 11, or 14. Uh, the set of irrational numbers best describes the situation. Each circumference would be the product of pi. And again, we're not into geometry right now, but just knowing that anything um, that we talk about as far as a circle goes with circumference uh, or area is going to be involved with pi, which I told you earlier, anytime pi is involved, it's automatically in the irrational category. Okay, so then you guys are to, again, use that Venn diagram, if you will, to break apart the real numbers, whether they're rational or irrational. Um, for numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, this is a short one, and that's why you guys had the worksheet 443 in addition to. All right, you guys have a good day, and we'll see you tomorrow.